Hello everybody, welcome to part one of our series. We're going to get started by setting up our reference and begin modeling the tires. Start by choosing a polymesh 3D star. Once you've done that, click on the gear icon located at the top left. Next, select the polyplane. Move the red and green cones down until they both reach one. Then we want to bring up the gizmo again. This time we're going to scale in the X direction until we hit 2. Now that we've done that, let's head on over to the texture palette to import our reference image. After selecting the image, let's navigate to the UV map tab located in the tool palette. Open the create projection option and press UVBT. We're aiming for simple, quick UVs here to ensure the image appears when we select it in the Texture Map tab. Let's head back to the Texture Palette and click on Adjust Colors. In the new window, press the first gray box to click and drag the arrow so we can pick the background color. Set the tolerance to 0 and lower the green intensity to 0.5. After confirming with OK, you'll need to reselect the adjusted image in the Texture Map tab. Let's control click on the canvas to mask out the plane and bring up the gizmo. From the gear, select the Cylinder 3D. Now control click on the canvas again to reverse the mask and split unmasked points. Next, we're going to delete the UVs to get rid of the texture and scale down the cylinder. Time to move it over towards the front wheel. Turn on the transparency option and switch off ghost. You can find these two buttons in the transform palette. Now let's press QC50. QC buttons are a part of a cool plugin named Drust Tools. Here's another quick tip. Moving the gizmo while holding down the control key will create a duplicate of your model. Now just like you did with the front cylinder, move and scale this duplicate to fit the tire. Control and drag on the canvas to unmask and rotate to the front view. Scale it just a bit in the z-axis and press delete loops to remove the middle edge loop. You'll find delete loops in the tool palette, under the geometry and then the edge loop menu. Alright, with the front tires all blocked out and spaced properly, let's shift our focus to the front tire. We'll reduce the smooth subdivision down to 1 and press apply. After that, let's delete the lower subdivisions. Now press Ctrl and Shift together to bring up the Select Rec Brush and delete the middle poles of both cylinders. With the Zmodeler brush, we can then collapse the holes. Once that's done, press QC50. Select the front cylinder and then split hidden. You can find this feature in the tool palette under the Subtools subpalette in the Split tab. Press Ctrl and Shift once again, this time to switch to the Slice Circle. This lets us slice in edge loops on both sides at the same time. From the Zmodeler brush, pick QMesh from the Polygon action with Polygroup All as the target. While QMeshing the blue polygroup, remember to keep the Shift key pressed down for a move operation. Next, QMesh it all the way through. Scale it a bit in the X axis and then press X to activate symmetry. Let's do a bevel edge loop complete to both sides, then switch it to slide edge loop complete. When sliding the edges, keep an eye on the top part of the tire to ensure it matches our reference. Time for insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation. Dragging side to side changes the elevation, while up and down adjust the resolution. Switch back to the slide edge action if you need to make any minor adjustments. My next step is to create a single polygroup for the outer part of the tire. 
To do this, press Ctrl W when the rest of the model is hidden. Then mask the inner and side of the tire to run a light polish by features. Clear the mask and delete that extra edge loop. Press Crease PG, which is located in the Tool Palette under Geometry and Crease. Turn on Dynamic Subdiv, set the Smooth Subdiv to 4 and the Crease Level to 2. Now with the base for the front tire created, it's time we gave the rear tire the same treatment. Let's press Ctrl and Shift together and drag out the slice circle. To get a better view of the edge loop, let's disable dynamic subdivisions and draw out another slice circle. Using the Z Modeler brush, select Q Mesh from the Polygon action with Polygroup All as the target. Just like before, while Q Meshing the blue polygroup, hold down the Shift key to execute a move operation to create the bevel. Next up, let's do a bevel edge loop complete for both sides. Then switch it to slide, edge loop complete. It's time again for insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation. Drag side to side for the elevation and up and down for the resolution. Feel free to switch back to the slide edge action for any minor adjustments. Then on the side, let's cubesh it all the way through. Select the two inner polygroups by using Ctrl and Shift, then mask them by Ctrl clicking on the canvas. Hold Ctrl and Shift while clicking on the canvas to reveal everything again. Run a very low polish by features a few times to help even out the polygons. Delete that extra edge loop and then Ctrl drag on the canvas to clear the mask. Let's crease the polygroups, then press D to activate Dynamic Subdiv. Turn off the polyframe and reduce the crease level to 2. With the base for both tires now in place, it's time we moved on to creating the treads. Alright, let's get started by control clicking on the canvas to mask the tire, then bring up the gizmo. Head on over to the gear and select the poly plane. Go ahead and split unmasked points. Scale it in the X axis. Then we can give it a 45 degree rotation. From the Z Modeler brush, select Insert for the edge action, multiple edge loops for the target, and specified elevation for the modifier. Once you added some edge loops, Head back to the Gizmos gear and select Bend Curve. So I gotta say, Bend Curve is easily one of my favorite modifiers. It provides a whole lot of control for different types of geometry, all while preserving the underlining form. Once you're happy with the shape, go back to the Gizmo and press Accept to lock it in. Our strategy here is to duplicate the subtool and go back in history until it was straight then reposition it to the next tread location. We'll perform several duplications, so we can skip repeating this process each time. Then return to the bend curve modifier from the gizmo and repeat the same process for the remaining treads. So when I use the bend curve, I like to start with a low point count, usually three. I'll block out the basic shape and add more points to refine the shape as I go along. Each point can be moved based on the camera view, and you can apply symmetry to the points if you need it. There's a single blue cone that will allow you to smooth out your curve. Honestly, it's a feature that doesn't get enough credit, and it has come in super handy many times. So for every point, you'll have three cones. Two white cones and one orange cone. The first white cone lets you scale. The second performs a squeeze operation. And the orange cone lets you twist the geo. There are also a couple hidden gems when it comes to the bend curve. Let's dive into those next. 
First up, when you move a point and hold shift, you're able to align it to an axis. That's trick number one. The second trick is that when you move a point and hold alt, you're able to offset the geometry from that point. This can be super handy if you just want a tad more control over the shape. Also, remember that the alignment of the points will depend on the position of the gizmo. If your mesh isn't aligned perfectly in the X, Y, or Z axis, simply align the gizmo to the mesh, and the bend curve and other modifiers will be aligned correctly. One last cool tip I like to share is that the bend curve modifier respects masking. What I like to do is activate the bend curve first, then add the masking. Most of the wirings for this motorcycle was done creating a cylinder with multiple edge loops, then moving them into place using the bend curve modifier. I'll show you more on that later in this series. Keep in mind this is just one of many ways to create treads for tires. You could also dynamesh the tire and sculpt the treads in with radial symmetry, or you could have masked out the treads and then extracted them to a new subtool for a boolean. Another option is to model one section of the tire and then use a ray mesh. There's really no shortage of methods to explore. All right, now that they're in position, let's merge them down into a single subtool. Using the Z Modeler brush with Insert Single Edge Loop selected, you can hold the Alt key to delete the edge loop. We're going to do a bit of cleanup on these smaller ones, trying to keep the polygons as even as possible. This will help shape the treads later on. You could also use Delete for the edge action and Edge Loop Complete for the target on the Z Modeler brush. Next, let's add an edge loop down the middle of a few of these planes. Then with the point action set to move for the Z Modeler brush, we can start shaping the outer edges to define the form of the treads. You might notice a reoccurring theme as we progress in this course. I'll spend more time on setting up the primary and secondary shapes and then speeding up when we get to the details. It's not that the details are not important or should be rushed, it's just that if you build a strong foundation, the details will naturally fall into place. Just like adding wires, welds, fasteners, dents, and panels on a poorly modeled base will only enhance the flaws. It's kind of like sculpting fine wrinkles and pores on a balloon shaped head without any underlining structure or knowledge of anatomy. Knowing when and where to invest your time and effort is something you'll learn over time. Now we'll switch to the edge action of extrude and the target of edge. We'll start pulling out a couple of single edges that will be moved into place to help with the taper of the shape. After that, I'll make some small final adjustments and rotate it to the side. Scaled on the Z axis to ensure they're completely flat. Make sure the polygon action is set to extrude and the target is all polygons and extrude upwards. Press Crease PG and hit the D key to turn on dynamic subdivisions. Then switch to Insert Single Edge Loop and start adding in edge loops to control the form. We can finish it off by creasing some of the angle changes. Turning off dynamic can help select those stubborn edges that are temporarily relocated by the subdivision. Lastly, I'll switch to the Move Infinite Depth Brush and make a few more minor adjustments while comparing it to the reference.
Okay, now comes the fun part. We'll be using the array mesh to populate the treads around the tire to use as a subtractive boolean. Let's turn on the visibility for our rear tire in the subtool list. Press W to activate the gizmo and position the tread in the middle of the tire. Then slide the tread along the Z axis until it just grazes the tire's exterior. Snap your view to the front to scale and move the tread to the middle of the tire. Next, head to the gizmos gear icon and pick bend arc. The green cone will control the arc. The bend direction is based on screen space and holding shift lets you snap the angle in five degree increments. Once you're satisfied with the arc, go back to the gear icon and press accept to lock it in. Now we'll look at the difference between the bent arc and the tire's curve. But before we tackle that, let's make sure the tread's bottom is a single polygroup. Isolate all the bottom polygroups and press Ctrl W to make them one polygroup. Now make the tire visible again by clicking on the eyeball icon in the subtool list. Let's go ahead and duplicate the tire and turn off the visibility for the duplicated tire. For the visible tire, press apply for the dynamic subdiv. The reason we pressed apply is because during a projection when dynamic is active, it will project to the lowest subdivision but we want a smooth projection on the highest resolution. To address the issue with the bent arc not aligning perfectly, we'll move the tread closer to the tire, but without touching it. Then we'll mask the entire tread except for the bottom polygroups we just created. Head down to the Project tab under your subtool list and set the Distance slider to 1. When we project now, you'll see a bizarre inflation occur. This is because two outside facing normals are facing each other. The inside face normals naturally tries to snap to the outside ones. To fix this, flip the faces on the bottom polygroups. Turn on double to see what's happening. You'll find double in the tool palette under display properties. And rerun the projection. Now the faces are flush against the tire. We can flip the faces again to get the normals pointing in the correct direction and then turn off double. Lastly, head back to the subtool list and click on the subtractive icon for the tread subtool. I'll also delete the high resolution proxy tire since it served its purpose. With the tread subtool selected and set to subtractive and the tire subtool visible, press Lie Boolean. However, to visualize the boolean, we need to position the subtractive subtool below the tire subtool. Next, grab the gizmo and start moving the tread towards the tire to check how deep you want it. Now we can snap it to the side and turn on array mesh. Go ahead and press the lock position and lock size and set the repeats to 9. Also, click on Rotate and set the X amount to 360. We can toggle the polyframe on and off to get a clear idea of the mesh's location on the canvas. Go ahead and bring up the gizmo and press the Transpose button in the Array Mesh menu. To switch to the Transpose line from the gizmo, press Y. This transpose line differs from the traditional one due to the yellow circle. That's your pivot point, which we want to set right in the middle of the tire. But aligning it without any reference point for the center can be a bit tricky. Here's a handy tip to navigate that. Go back to the tire subtool and control click on the canvas to mask it. Swap back to the gizmo by pressing Y. Head to the gear and choose the polyplane. Split the plane to a new subtool and rotate it by 90 degrees. 
switch off live bullion momentarily and scale up the plane until the edges touch the tire's exterior. Grab the Z-Model brush, select Split for the point action and choose Point for the target. After forming the circle, click on the plane to isolate the polygroup and delete hidden. Now select the tread and turn the live boolean back on. Head back to Array Mesh and with the transpose line, we now have a much better understanding where the tire center is. I also recommend zooming in and aligning the Y and Z axis line with the center of the open circle. A useful tip is that by pressing shift gives you a kind of an increment snapping effect for better control. A alternative method and a much easier one to use is a new feature called stager. Set your home and target stage so you can easily switch locations to better set up your array mesh. After you lined up the pivot, you can turn off the plane's visibility in the subtool list. Do a quick check to ensure it's evenly positioned around the tire. Finally, toggle back on the gizmo by pressing Y and make some last adjustments to the depth while the array mesh is still active. Now that we've got the rear tire all sorted, it's time to repeat the process for the front tire. First control click on the canvas to mask the tire, bring up the gizmo and select the polyplane from the gear. Control click the canvas to invert the mask and select split mask points. We can now scale it along the X axis and insert some edge loops with the Z modeler brush. Go ahead and make some duplicates in the subtool list so they're ready to form our basic tread shapes. Turn off all the eye icons from the subtool list, then start rotating and positioning the plane. Head to the gear from the gizmo and select Bend Curve. Move the orange dots around to create the shape of the tread. Once you're happy with it, go back to the gizmo's gear and press accept. Select the next subtool and simply rinse and repeat. Alright, since this is the first video, I like to talk a little bit about low to mid poly modeling in ZBrush. But first, it's important to note that regardless of what software you use or which field you're in, Understanding the basics and having a strong foundation is extremely important in excelling in your craft. So with that said, let's dive into it. In my opinion, there are three essential features that deserve your attention to be successful when it comes to low to mid poly modeling in ZBrush. First up, and this is a no brainer, is ZModeler. The ZModeler brush is your bread and butter of low poly modeling. It has all your basic modeling operations packed into one brush. It's context sensitive, which means when you hover over a poly, edge, or point with your mouse or pen, the corresponding actions and targets appear. It's also user friendly and intuitive. The operations are interactive and happens right on the canvas. So there's no need to take side panel detours in order to use sliders or type in numbers, which keeps the artist engaged and the modeling workflow uninterrupted. I think we all understand its value and why it's number one on the list. Next, we have what I believe to be the most underrated and misunderstood feature, and that is polygroups. They're the beating heart of hard surface modeling in ZBrush because so many operations depend on them. The lack of polygroup usage in a workflow is a major reason why people hit a plateau with their modeling progress. Once you start tapping into the full potential of polygroups, ZBrush becomes more of a colleague and a friend rather than your enemy. The third key feature is the gizmo. It's ZBrush's secret weapon. It also keeps the action within the canvas for a more organic and fluid workflow. It's deeply integrated into my workflow due to its broad range of capabilities. Now, I've always been a huge fan of the transpose line. It feels smoother, more natural. However, the gizmo has become so powerful, it's not really a choice anymore. 
there are still a few things I do with the transpose line, but it's for very specific situations. So to sum it up, before we dive back into our tutorial, Zmodeler is your workhorse, polygroups are your ally, and the gizmo is your secret weapon. All right, once you position and shaped all the planes, merge them down into a single subtool. Let's bring up the Zmodeler brush and select Move as the point action and by Brush Radius as the target. You could also use any of the move brushes if you like. But I've grown pretty comfortable using the Zmodeler brush for many tasks. It kind of speeds things up a bit by reducing the need to constantly switch between brushes. Plus, the Move Points action in the Zmodeler brush has a nifty little feature. It automatically welds points that comes within a certain distance of each other. It's not only handy for what we're doing here, but also when you're manually retoppling. It's a time saver and feels quite natural to use. Next, press Ctrl W to group visible. Then from the Zmodeler brush, choose Extrude All Polygons. Let's hit Crease PG and press D to activate Dynamic Subdivision. Just like with the previous treads, we're going to start adding in edge loops to help control the form. There will be times where it's more beneficial to crease the edges and adjust the fall off with the crease level. However, when we're after different bevel distances and edge curvatures on the same mesh, using a combination of both creases and edge loops can work out great. Now let's turn off polygroups and check out what we got so far. All right, I noticed a minor adjustment we have to make, which is deleting an edge loop. Once that's done, we can get into the fun stuff. Let's turn on the visibility for the front tire and rotate the view. I'm zooming out a bit to use the gizmo's white circle as a guide for positioning the tread in the middle of the tire. Then move it to the tire's outer edge. From there, let's scale it down a bit and adjust its position toward the center of the tire. Don't worry about the accuracy at this point, we're just eyeballing the position. Once we're happy with where it's at, go to the gizmo's gear and select the bend arc. As we did with the rear tire, we're aiming to get the rear faces of the tread as close as possible to the front tire's surface. The green cone controls your arc angle, and the white cone adjusts your radius. As mentioned before, this depends on the screen space, so snapping the canvas to an orthographic view can help you achieve more accurate results. Pressing shift as you rotate the model will snap it to the nearest axle plane, and it's also a good idea to turn off perspective. Once you're finished, return to the gear and press accept. Next up, we need to ensure the bottom faces belong to their own polygroup. When they do, hover over one of the bottom faces and from the Zmodeler brush, select Flip Faces for the action and Polygroup All for the target. Turn on Double so we can see the flipped faces and mask everything except those faces. Navigate to the Project tab and increase the distance to 1. Let's go ahead and select the tire and duplicate it. A speedy way to select visible subtools is to Alt click them on the canvas. Now press Apply for the dynamic subdivisions and making sure we're on the highest subdivision, press Delete lower. Now we can choose the tread and head back to the Project tab. Keeping the same settings, press Project All. Isolate the tread and clear the mask. Using the Zmodeler brush, flip the bottom faces back, then turn off double. Turn on the gizmo and move the tread into the tire.
Next, we can delete the duplicated tire and move the original tire above the tread in the subtool list. For the tread, we need to change the Boolean operation to subtractive. Finally, we can select a tread and adjust the depth to more closely match what's shown in the reference. Now we're at the exciting part. Let's head over to the Array Mesh tab and let ZBrush do some of the heavy lifting. Press Array Mesh, Lock Position, and Lock Size. Then change the repeats to 9. Click on Rotate and set the X amount to 360. Let's turn off the polyframe and press Transpose. Press the W key to bring up the gizmo, then the Y key to switch it to the transpose line. Now remember that handy trick we used with the rear tire to find the middle? Let's go ahead and use it again. Choose the front tire and bring up the gizmo. From the gear menu, select polyplane. We'll split this plane into a new subtool and rotate it 90 degrees. Scale it up so the whole tire fits inside the plane. For a moment, let's switch off Live Boolean and choose Polyplane from the gizmo again, which will bring back the cones. Let's make an X and Y divide of 8. Using the Z model brush, choose a point action of split and a target of point. Once we have the center point, we can hide the polygroup and delete hidden. Select the tread subtool and scroll down to the array mesh tab. Using the transpose line, move the yellow circle to the hole we made in the plane. Feel free to zoom in and adjust the pivot's position. Once you're satisfied with where it's at, turn Live Boolean back on to double check your work. At this stage, you can also hide the reference plane. I'll also take a minute or two to see how it's comparing to the photo references I have on my second monitor. I noticed that the distance between each tread group is a little wider than it should be. Adding another repeat to the array mesh wouldn't look quite right. So an alternative would be to scale the tread in the y-axis to fill up the gaps between each tread group. Sometimes the simplest solutions are the best. Now that we've completed the block out of both tires, let's get those rims started. Begin by control clicking the canvas to mask the tire, then bring up the gizmo. From the gear, select the cylinder 3D. Set the H divides to 65 and split the cylinder off into a new subtool. Scale up the cylinder until it's touching the tire. Then scale it down into Z axis. With the tire's visibility off again, weld the cylinder along the x-axis. If you don't have Ryan's tools installed, mirror and weld will also do the trick. Turn on symmetry and from the Z-Modeler brush, choose inset for the polygon action, flat island for the target, and standard for the modifier. Next, switch to Q-Mesh a single poly and punch out two different faces. We're aiming for a strip of 13 faces. After that, we can Q-mesh the cylinder's interior. Select a small portion of the bigger island with Control and Shift. Then press Control Shift A to grow all, and invert the selection by Control Shift dragging on the canvas. Then delete the hidden parts. Zoom in a tad and add two edge loops toward the top of the mesh. The logic behind the spacing of the edge loops is because when I move the bottom edge strip inward, I want that natural slope we see in the reference. To get this effect, I pick Transpose from the Z-Modeler brush with Poly Loop and Flat as the target. 
From time to time, you'll see the model snap to certain views. This is because I've set up hotkeys assigned to camera views. This helps me quickly align the model with my references, keeping the proportions and form in check. Once we've added some edge loops in the middle, snap to the side view and mask the model. Bring up the gizmo and from the gear, select Cylinder 3D. Bring the H divides down to 16. 65 is just too much. Scale the cylinder down and position it roughly in the area. Next, select Q-Mesh Single Poly from the Z-Modeler brush. If you hold down the Alt key, the faces you select will turn white. This tags specific faces for the Z-Modeler to work on. My aim here is to leave only four faces of the cylinder's front plane untagged. Q-Mesh the two outer faces, snap to the side view, and unmask the outer faces by pressing Ctrl and Alt. Then pull up the gizmo and move the face closer to the larger island. The ability to unmask faces, edges, and vertices seriously speeds up the workflow, as you don't constantly have to invert the masking. I'll admit it felt a bit strange at first because I've been masking a certain way for a while. But now, after using it for a while, it's become second nature to me. Let's carry on and unmask the ends, then snap to the front view. Scale it in the x-axis until it lines up with the two inner edge loops. Clear the mask and then go ahead and unmask the middle. Scale that in the x-axis until it lines up with the outer rim. Then we can unmask the model and add a single edge loop right down the middle with the Z modeler brush. Now we can go ahead and Q-mesh both ends of the spoke to the rim. Next, flip the model to the other side and select the Move Infinite Depth Brush. It feels to me like the spoke is flaring out a bit too much where it meets the rim. Switching back to the Z Model Brush, I want to select the edge action of bevel. Add a small bevel on the inner edge loop, then switch to Insert Multiple Edge Loops. With symmetry still on, add an edge loop on either side of the bevel we just created. Now select Q-Mesh with Poly Loop as a target and Q-Mesh the inner poly loop. Press Shift while Q-Meshing to activate the Move feature. Now let's snap it to the side view and grab the Move Infinite Depth Brush. Adjust the brush size a bit and make some minor adjustments to the inside of the rim. All right, let's dive back into the Z model brush, select mask for the edge action, and start masking a few edges. Once you're done, invert the mask and switch back to the Move Infinite Depth Brush. I'm aiming to create a more gradual fall off for the inner spoke. Once you're happy with it, clear the mask and switch to the Slice Curve Brush. The Slice Curve Brush is amazing when you need to add polygroups or edge loops fast. In this case, we're just adding an edge loop, so don't worry about the polygroups for now. If you want to keep your polygroups intact, just mask the model first, then add edge loops using the Slice Curve Brush. Masking will ignore the polygroups from the Slice Curve Brush. So here are some handy hotkeys for the Slice Curve Brush. Control and Shift to activate. Spacebar to move a line once it's drawn, single tap alt for adding a curve, double tap alt for a sharp angle, control and spacebar before drawing a line to select brush radius, releasing shift and control after a line is drawn to disengage snapping. And lastly, to switch to the select rectangle brush, release shift and control after the line is drawn and tap a control. Next, let's add another edge loop to help when we start forming the shape of the surface with the move infinite depth brush. So you probably noticed a few times there's been a pop-up pie menu with different brushes on it. And that's thanks to a great plugin by Artist Knot. 
They have a range of ZBrush plugins, including some for free. I've been having a blast with their Pi menu. Always been a fan of pop-up menus. While we're talking about plugins, I'd like to mention a few other that I frequently use. Ryan's Tools offers a wealth of handy features for all ZBrush artists. I'm also a big fan of the Dynamesh Utility. Lastly, I really like the Drust Tools, specifically the QC20, 30, 40, and 50. It's been a really long time since I last worked without using the quick creases from his plugin. Alright, let's dive back into the Z Model Brush. This time, selecting Transpose for the Polygon Action and Flat Island for the target. We want to get the ends of the rim as flat as we can, which will make it easier to weld the points once we get to arraying them. Grab the Move Infinite Depth Brush to make any necessary adjustments. After that, switch back to the Z Mother brush and select Delete Flat Island. Now we can delete the extra edge loops on the top of the rim. Insert one edge loop on each side to help keep the topology balanced. For the polygon action, go for Crease, select Poly Loop for the target, and choose Outer Targets for the modifier. Go ahead and crease the inner poly loop to see what it gives us. Next up, press QC50 and then select Crease from the edge actions. Holding down the Alt key will uncrease edge loops. It's always good to set up your creases before starting with array mesh. Go ahead and turn off dynamic and make sure you have symmetry set to the X axis. Back in the Z Model brush, select inset for the polygon action, single poly for the target, and standard for the modifier. Lastly, alt tag the polygons you want to target so we can do everything at once. If you ever get this over extrusion for the inset, just drag it in a bit more than you need then pull it back to the offset you desire. Now let's select Slide by Brush Radius for the point action. And for the edge action, you can use Collapse. Let's pick QMesh Polygroup All and give it a little bit of height. Once the autosave wraps up, pick Crease for the Polygon Action, Poly Loop for the Target, and Outer Targets for the Modifier. Then start creasing those sharp edges. Since our crease level is set at 2 and smooth subdivision set to 4, we're losing the crease tolerance on the edges. A quick fix is to add a support loop. Let's have another look to see if we missed anything else. Some polygons need flattening, so we'll use the Z Muller brush and select Transpose a single poly. 
Alt tag the polys you wish to flatten and scale them in the Z axis. Position a gizmo on the outer point by alt clicking on it. And then we can rotate it inward to help with the transition. Go ahead and repeat these steps on the other side of the rim. Remember to uncrease the inner edge loop. We don't need that one creased. Switch to the Move Infinite Depth Brush and do some final adjustments. Press Ctrl W to create a single poly group. Then navigate to the Array Mesh tab. Select Array Mesh, Lock Position, and Lock Size. I want the repeats to be 5. Then we can rotate it 360 degrees and the X amount. Now click on Transpose and bring up the gizmo. We want to press the Y key and reposition the pivot to move the instances in place. We're just going to eyeball it this time. Go ahead and turn off Extrude and click Make Mesh. Now we're going to go ahead and press Weld Points and see what it gives us. Slowly increase the weld distance until all the points are welded. You'll find the weld points in the Tool Palette under Geometry and in the Modify Topology tab. Now turn on symmetry in the x-axis with the radial count set to 5. We're going to uncrease all the welded points. Since we're already using radial symmetry, let's clean up this topology real quick. We'll use the Zmodeler brush to select Split Edge. Now we can switch to Delete Edge. We also got a crease issue on the rim's edge to address. To smooth out the bevel's fall off, we'll add an edge loop. Next, we'll switch the edge action to Insert and the target to multiple edge loops. We'll also use Interactive Elevation for the modifiers. After rounding out the top of the rim, switch to Crease Edge Loop Complete and press Alt to uncrease the edge loops. Now let's complete deleting the edges on this side. Go ahead and take a moment to compare it to the reference and see how we're doing. Before we wrap up, I want to give these edges a bit more breathing room. To achieve that, we'll use the slide action in the Z Modeler brush. Switch to the Move Infinite Depth Brush to do some final adjustments.
Lastly, add an edge loop to the outside of the rim to help keep the fall off consistent. Hope everybody enjoyed it and see you in part two.